Women and people of color have been struggling to fill sports media roles since positions were available. It may be easy to see a football team and feel it portrays diversity, but the facade of unbiased hiring ends there. In 2021, the Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sports, better known as TIDES, conducted research on 75 newspaper and sports media outlets. The study found that white men make up 66% of sports reporters. That's a 6.4% decrease since 2018, which is a start, but no big step for women and minorities in the industry. When it comes to behind the scenes roles, only 20 sports editors were women, while 83 women were assistant sports editors. Without more specific data than their race and gender, it's hard to tell if this is the start of a new wave of women in the industry or an indication that they're not often moved into higher positions. Not only do they struggle to get into these jobs, but once they are in the public's eye, they endure swarms of unhappy social media users leaving crude and offensive comments. In 2016, Julie DeCaro and Sarah Spain teamed up with a producer and director to make an eye-opening segment. They had random men take a seat face to face with them individually and read some of the comments they've been sent. The men had no idea what they were about to read was so extreme and their actions say it all. The comments have been censored, but strong language and triggering events are referenced. Viewer discretion is advised. All right, you ready to do some mean tweets? I'm ready. Sarah Spain sounds like a nagging wife on TV today. Not even married yet. <laughs> Julie DeCaro is a run-of-the-mill, mediocre beat writer. Not atrocious, not good. Just sorta there. I'm actually not a beat writer at all, but okay. <laughs> Sarah Spain is just a scrub muffin. I don't even know what a scrub muffin is. I don't is. either. I love muffins. These are just a few of the initial comments to ease the volunteering men into their positions. It doesn't take long, however, for the men to find they have trouble reading the more aggressive comments wishing harm on Spain and DiCaro. Hmm. I don't think I can even say that. <sighs> um, I hope your boyfriend beats you. I'm sorry. Why bring up your own rape in this story? Is it your way of firing back at critics who said you can't get any? I'm having trouble looking at you when I'm saying mm -hmm. these things. Uh, you need to be hit in the head with a hockey puck and killed. That's it. Spain didn't plan this out for entertainment or because she wanted to put these volunteers on blast. She did it under the duress of feeling unheard, invalid to the public, hoping these men's voices will resonate with biased crowds. I'm so used to it by now. It's been years of dealing with this. So when people are shocked by it, I want to say, I mean, and this is how it is. How do you not know? But I also think there's something to be said for the tact that they took in the video. And, you know, there's a lot of conversation in society about how women are not believed, right? So mm. 30 plus women can say something about Bill Cosby and no one will believe it until we unearth some old court fit footage where he personally says himself that he's drugged women or, you know, women will tell their stories and of abuse or sexual assault and no one will believe it until a man backs it up. And if you watch this video, I think it is really powerful that it's not just Julie and I reading aloud things that we've received or talking about the abuse that we get, but it's looking at a man, and in these cases, men who had no idea what was coming, and understanding through their uncomfortableness, their physical reaction to this, just how terrible it is. And maybe it shouldn't require us to see men talking about it for that to happen, but in this case, I certainly think that was one of the most powerful things about it, was our stoicism in the face of it. Women, of course, aren't the only group dealing with these issues. While African Americans now make up as much as 41% of the employees at locations such as the Miami Herald, other ethnicities still struggle to find their place, specifically Latinas. In fact, since the last study in 2018, their numbers have dropped below 2% of sports editors. Numbers that low indicate only a couple individuals in the entire industry. For instance, 
In 2018, only two Asian men and two Asian women worked as sports editors, making up around 3% of the industry. This number has not increased since. I was able to connect to them because there's not a whole lot of Asian people in media and just kind of get their mentorship and advice and guidance and as to how to approach a career in this industry. And I think you articulated it pretty well in that I wanted to be part of the difference that I wanted to see in sports media. According to the gender hiring grade for APSE sports editors, the mere 16.7% of editors that are women earns an F grade for the industry. Another thing to note is that about 21% of the industry that are people of color is considered a B plus grade. Even this grading scale, while seemingly balanced for women, would consider just over a quarter of the industry being colored to be a perfect score. This notion only furthers the idea of Caucasians and minorities, not separating any minorities in between. White is only one of many races, and it has no need to cover even 50% of an industry. Together, communities can inspire each other by stopping the perpetuation of bias and right-fit hiring. Again, these are actions that further segregation in America. So next time you want to join the group of people that looks like you, consider shutting off your preconceived notions and learning something new from someone with differences.